Hey, this is Andreas, and I wanted to walk you through an upcoming feature for the next Scikit-Learn release that I'm super excited about, which is Pandas Data Frame Output for Scikit-Learn Transformers. So this is an adaption of one of the examples that's on the Scikit-Learn website, but I just want to walk through and give you a little bit of the background. So let's start with the Iris data set. Um, here I'm loading the Iris data set, and I load it as a pandas data frame, and I return x and y. I use the train test split to split it into training and test set. So now x train is still a pandas data frame. Um, so for each of the columns in x, so for each of the features, I have a column name, which tells me what the column means. So that's super useful. However, scikit-learn internally works with NumPy arrays. So if we use a scikit-learn transformer for pre-processing, such as a standard scaler for scaling the data, then we lose the column name information. So here I instantiate a standard scaler, I fit it on the training data set, and I transform it. So here x train and x test are pandas data frames, but after the scaling, we get a NumPy array. So here, uh, we don't have the column name information anymore. In this case, we do know what the columns are because they correspond one-to-one -to, -one to the input columns. However, if there's a more complex preprocessing, it might be tricky to figure out what these columns mean. So let's look at a different example, the polynomial features. So here, I just call fit transform on x train and polynom polynomial features constructs many different features for each input feature. So it does all the combinations of features and all the features squared. And so it's much harder to understand now uh, what the output here is. So the new exciting thing that's going to be in the next release of scikit-learn is um, the transform output option in set config. You can specify this for individual transformers, or you can do this globally, which is uh, convenient if you're working in a notebook like I do right now. So I import zconfig, and I set uh, the transform output to pandas. So now if I do that, any transformer in scikit-learn will create pandas output. So now the output type of fit transform is again the pandas theta frame, and I have my uh, column names. So here you can see the first column was actually just a constant one created by polynomial features. Then I have the four original features, and then I have uh, separate lengths squared, and I have combinations of features, and so on. So this makes it much, much easier to understand what the role of all of these features are. So I really love this, and I think it's super useful. But it's even more useful if you build more complex pipelines. So let's take a look at that. Let's look at the Titanic data set. And let's go back to the way things were before with uh, NumPy array output, which is what I do by setting transform output to default. I'm now fetching from OpenML the Titanic data set, again as a Panacea frame, and I get out x, return x and y. And I split it into training test data. So now my training data looks like this. Um, so there's, in this data set, there's categorical, continuous, string variables, uh, missing values, all kind of things. And so this requires a little bit more pre-processing. A really good way to do this with scikit-learn is building uh, pipelines and column transformers. I don't want to go into too much detail about this here, but this would be what um, a pretty standard pipeline would look like. So let's say we want to use to continuous variables age and fair. These we want to do an imputer and then a standard scaler. So I make a pipeline with an imputer and a standard scaler. And then I use make a column transformer that applies this pipeline to age and fair. And let's say I want to use three categorical variables, embarked, sex, and p class. And I can use the one hot encoder uh, to preprocess these. I also add this verbose feature names out feature uh, 
sorry, flag here, but that's not so important for now. And then, so after this pre-processing, I can put these in a pipeline with say logistic regression. And I get out this, um, now in recent versions of scikit-learn, you get this nice HTML representation that you can inspect about like, uh, there's a pipeline with a column transform and logistic regression. I can click on each of these things and I can see what columns are they applied to and what are the parameters. Using uh, these kind of pipelines is uh, super useful because it helps you with avoiding uh, leaking information from the test from the training set to a test set. It allows you to do cross validation and you can do parameter searches with grid search CV and so on. So doing these pipelines is super awesome. So now let's uh, fit it on a training set and score it on the test set. And what we get out is that our uh, model here is 83.2% accurate. The first thing we usually want to do now is look at the uh, coefficients of the model and see like what did the model actually learn. And um, before we look at the coefficients, we kind of need to figure out what do these coefficients mean. And for this, we need to figure out what is it that actually goes into the model. Here, I'm uh, slicing off the last step of the pipeline logistic regression. So only the um, column transformer remains. So I could also just get the first element of the pipeline, but often you have multiple steps in a pipeline. So I get everything but the classifier and I transform my test set. This is what the classifier sees when applied to your test set. Again, this is um, a little bit hard to interpret because we don't have column names. We, um, so, we know that before the transformation, and this was what went in, but then in the pipeline, this will get pre-processed. We are selecting some of the columns. We do some scaling, missing value imputation, hot encoding, and so on. And we'll end up with this NumPy array up here. But we don't really know uh, what each column means. So let's check on the values of the columns that we looked at. So. Um, for the categorical variables, we had embark, sex, and p class. And so um, there's uh, four different values we found here, S, C, Q, and uh, NAN. There's uh, male and female for sex, and there's um, three, two, and one for p class. And so, um, after uh, our um, transformation here, the first two columns are actually continuous. These are um, age and fair, and the next four columns uh, are the four possible values for embarked, then the two possible values for sex, and the three possible values for p-class. So now this way we could uh, try to interpret the uh, NumPy array that we get here. But, uh, Ideally, we don't want to do this um, by hand. Um, so, yeah, if we uh, try to uh, just make it a data frame, we can see uh, maybe a little bit more easily here than in the NumPy uh, array what's going on. So, if the two continuous features, and we can see here uh, there are three groups of features. So, this is the four values for um, embarked the two values for sex and the three values for p-class. Um, but because we don't have the column names, this is kind of tricky. So if we um, set the output to pandas, now the uh, pipeline will actually use pandas data frames everywhere. We actually have to refit the pipeline so it propagates all the feature names correctly. Um, so I'll do this here. But then if we call transform the same way uh, without the classifier, we'll get out the uh, pandas data frame together with the column names. So now we know that first one is age, second one is fair, then we 
as we expected, the, there's um, four columns for embarked for the different values, two columns for sex, and then three columns for P class. And so now this form is much, much easier to uh, interpret, and we don't have to worry about tracking um, what feature means what through the column transformer and pipelines. So our, I think this is going to be uh, super useful. I hope you find it useful too. This is currently not released yet. It's in the development version. So we'd love to get your feedback, um, ideally before it gets released. Once we release a feature like this, we have to be backward compatible. And so um, that makes it much harder to make any changes. So if you try this out and you see something that we could do better, it's much easier for us to fix that now than to wait until we release it. So uh, here are the versions of um, the libraries I'm using. There's um, this example here is, uh, from the documentation. I expanded it a little bit. And uh, you can try this out by using the nightly build. You can find the installation instructions on the website for the nightly build. That's the easiest way to get the development uh, version. If you have any questions or feedback, the um, best way to do this is to just create an issue or bug on the GitHub repository. Also, if you write, a, if you're an author of a library that builds on top of scikit-learn, Ideally, this should sort of automatically work for you as long as you provide a get feature names out function. Um, if it, you have any trouble with this, we'd also love to hear from you. Um, we also got a couple of questions already that I want to maybe um, answer here. So one thing is that like I really wanted this to happen for so long, and I think it's awesome that we finally have met and uh, we finally made it happen. It took us quite a long time. Uh, one of the reasons is that scikit-learn really initially was based on NumPy arrays. There wasn't really a data frame library that was established when uh, scikit-learn first came out. And scikit-learn was used a lot in um, the context of scientific computing, where usually the data is like all floats. Um, and then adding it back and later was kind of tricky because um, scikit-learn has a support for sparse data, which is hard to represent in pandas. And converting between pandas and NumPy arrays is not always straightforward. So there's a lot of different corner cases. And so it just took us a while uh, to make it all work. Um, so this is for all uh, the outputs of transform. Um, we are also thinking about supporting pandas output for uh, predict or predict proba or decision function, or maybe in other cases as well. So we'd love to hear from you uh, where would you find it most useful? And uh, what kind of output would you expect to happen? Also, so now you can uh, chain different column transformers, which is great, and hopefully makes everything uh, easier. And um, so when will this be released? It's going to be um, in the next um, couple of weeks or months, so uh, probably sometime the end of uh, 2022. Ideally, really, please try it out with the night really, uh, nightly builds so we can get your feedback before we release it. That would be really awesome. All right, I hope you're as excited as I am about this feature, and I hope you can uh, go try it out.